Trap Exercises Part 2 To complete your understanding of the Trap Exercises add-on, I will take you through four segments, starting with Importing a Training Plan, followed by Understanding the Available Features, then Creating a Plan of Your Own, and finally Exporting your plan to the desktop. From there you can email it to someone else. In this first segment, I'm going to show you how easy it is to import a training plan. I'm going to do this by going to Edit, and then I'm going to come down to Training Plans and left click. In the Training Plans dialog box that opens, notice that it does not have any training plans in the system at this time. However, someone has sent me a training plan that is currently on my desktop. So I'm going to bring that into the DryFire software by coming down to and clicking on Import Training Plan, which takes me then to basically my desktop. And in my desktop, all I have to do is go find the plan that I have, which in this case is called 90 plus day one. So if I either enter that name here and click open or double click on this, and notice as we import this training plan that there is a message from the person who sent it, which says, when you have completed the eight exercises, email the PDF files for each exercise. Thanks, Dryfire Bob. So this is a message that the person sending the training plans can embed in the training plans that you receive, or they do not have to put that there. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and then notice that I have my 90 plus day one exercise now in the dry fire system. So isn't that simple? That's all there is to importing a training plan. Now let's take the time to look over the features that are available inside a training plan. I'm going to do this by highlighting the plan. Then I'm going to click on edit. And that opens up the trap exercises dialog box. And let's look at the parts and take apart this first training exercise that's been sent to us. First of all, you can see the training plan's name is in this window. Then the available exercises are in this window. Notice that if I take the slider and pull that down, I've got exercises one through exercise eight. Then below that, I have the specific exercise name. And then in this case, I can determine what is going on for exercise number one. Notice in this area here where we have the target, I can see that the target speed is 50%, that there is no maximum target delay or minimum target delay. So in other words, that release target delay that we talked about earlier is not being used in this particular exercise. Then the next area would be over here to the right where they have picked a type of target called fixed angles. And when fixed angles are called for, then this is what we see in the area below it. You can choose up to 10 different angles by putting a check mark in each one of the angles uh, box in front of it. And then you specify either a minus number of degrees, meaning to the left of center, or in this case, a plus number of degrees, meaning that amount of degrees to the right. And also, if you do not put a plus sign, it assumes it is a plus. Now, I'm going to go up here and just change this so that you can see the other potential. If I click on this, also, this could be selected as wedge of the pie. Notice how this central part right here has completely changed. And instead of picking 10 specific angles, you can pick a wedge of the pie by setting the angle of the center line and then how far it is going to vary left and right of center and how high the target is going to be at the intermediate point. Now let's go back and change this back to what it was, fixed angles, where it had a minus 18, which is a hard left, and a plus 18, which is a hard right. Now then, the hit-miss criteria is your selection below in this area down here. Right now, it has in it, based upon pellet energy, parentheses default. 
And that simply means the normal way dry fire has always determined whether you broke the target or not is based upon its analysis of pellet energy at the distance that you're shooting the target. Now, in the trap exercises, for training purposes, we have developed another method of determining uh, what it takes to break a target. So let's see what those choices are by clicking the down arrow. I can choose this method, which is maximum pointing error. And notice when I click on that, here it says maximum pointing error. So I can put a number in here. Let's, For instance, let's say that I put 20 inches in here. Then basically all that's going to happen when you shoot the target, irregardless of the distance from the muzzle of your gun, if you're within 20 inches from the center of your pattern to the center of the clay, it's going to tell you that you broke a target. Now let's go back up and see a little bit more exotic method. The last one is maximum pointing error and range. So besides being able to say how close you must be to the target with the maximum pointing error, you also get to choose that how far the target is away from the muzzle of the gun. And in this case, it says the hit must be between 25 yards and 35 yards. So it's completely up to you how you determine what a hit is. And if you're working, for instance, towards being able to break 100% of the targets, and your final goal is your pointing air has to be within 7.5 inches, you would put in 7.5 inches here. And if you're using uh, 8.5, then this number right here, you're going to want to make this 26 yards and make this, yard, this distance 33 yards. And then what you're telling dry fire is really the truth. If you are always never more than 7 inches from dead center and you shoot the target between 26 yards from the muzzle of your gun and 33 yards from the muzzle of your gun, you will break 100% of the targets. So you can see the power of this hit criteria area up here where you are not uh, completely relying upon based upon pellet energy. So there are some very, very good times in which this is the way you should be practicing by using a defined pointing error and a defined range of the clay. Now the final part that you can choose over here has to do with speed and direction. So that's actually two items. The speed you can set in here as a minimum speed and a maximum speed of the wind. So if you say over here that uh, the minimum speed is 10 miles an hour and the maximum speed is 30 miles an hour, then what dry fire does is on every target that you're going to shoot, it will pick a wind speed of somewhere not less than 10 and not more than 30 miles an hour and apply that to the angle direction that you have said. And down here, we're looking at 270 degrees and that, according to dry fire, is west. So the wind would blowing from, be blowing for you from the left to the right. Zero degrees is straight ahead of you, 270 is to the left, 90 is to the right, and 180 is behind you. So you can also do the same thing with wind direction. For instance, I could say that the wind direction is zero to 270 degrees. That means that the wind can vary anywhere from straight into my face with zero degrees or coming from my left going to the right. And so if this was how you had set the wind, basically what we're saying is each and every target is going to vary. The wind speed could be as low as 10 or as high as 30, and the wind direction could be straight into your face or directly from your left-hand side. So that completes, I believe, an understanding of what you can control. And now we're going to go on to the next segment. Now I'm going to create some trap exercises. I'm going to start and do this myself by clicking on Create Trap Plan. That opens the trap exercise window and I go immediately up and give it a name. I'm going to call it an assortment of exercises. All right, now given it a name, the first thing that I want to do is I'm and I'm going to create four different exercises. So I'm going to come down here 
and I'm just going to call this one uh, exercise one. And what am I going to have? I'm going to go ahead and do this at 80% of speed. And I'm going to start out with a minimum target delay of zero seconds and a maximum target delay of five seconds. And so what that means is I've already defined that in this first exercise that the targets are going to fly on the wall at 80% of speed and that every time you call pull, the target is going to be launched anywhere from immediate to up to five seconds later. Now, what kind of targets am I going to have you look at? I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on fixed targets. And in this case, I'm going to give you five angles. So I'm going to click these five angles and you don't have to take them in a row. You could take any five. Now, one angle up here is going to be a hard left, which is a minus 18. Another target over here is going to be a moderately to the left. I'm going to call it a minus eight. The third target I'm going to leave as zero degrees. The fourth target I'm going to make eight, which infers plus eight. And the last target is going to be 18, which infers plus 18 degrees to the right. So now I have said what I want in this first exercise is 80% speed targets with a zero to five second release delay. I'm going to throw you randomly any one of five different angle targets as viewed from standing on top of the trap house looking down between your legs. Now remember, these angles will appear correct if you're on station three, but if you're off on station number one, which is 21 and a half degrees to the left, these angles are not going to be 0, 18, and 18 from your viewpoint. It's going to be offset by the station that you're on. Now, let's go down here and also introduce some speed. So I'm going to put a sustained speed of 20 miles an hour by putting 20 in both the min and the max. And then I'm going to have <clears throat> the wind direction basically from behind me, which is 180 degrees. And I'm going to keep it at that. So on this particular layout, all of the targets are going to have a tailwind over the head, which of course is going to drive the target down as it travels out. Now, in my hit uh, miss criteria, instead of using based upon pellet energy, I'm going to use it based upon maximum pointing error and range. And so this time I'm going to say that, that <clears throat> you need to be within 10 inches of dead center and that I want you to hit the target somewhere between 26 and 31 yards. Now, that means that if you shoot and you're 10.1 inches from dead center, it tells you that you missed. If you were 10.0, it would say, okay, you meet that criteria. What about the distance? If you shot it between 26 and 31 yards, you're going to hit, get a hit. But if you shot the target at 31.1 yards, you're going to get a miss. So this is my first exercise, and I'm done deciding what it's going to be. I'm going to create exercise number two by clicking on the Add button. And I'm going to call this one Exercise 2. And we're going to do this one a little bit different. This one's going to be at 90% of speed. I'm going to have no release delay. So zero out both of these. I'm going to leave it in wedge of the pie. But I want all, I'm, because these are going to be station one targets primarily that I'm setting up for, I want most of the targets to be to the left. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and say that the center line is not straight ahead out of the trap house, but it's minus seven degrees to the left of center. That's the center of my wedge. And then I'm going to have the targets vary uh, 11 degrees either side of that seven degree offset. So that means I'll get targets that go up to minus 18 on the left and go to a plus four on the right. And again, that's viewed as standing on top of the trap house looking down between your legs. And let's also make these targets that are climbing faster than we most of us like them to see. So I'm going to put 11 feet. So that's a very high uh, intermediate point. 
Then let's go ahead and in this case, let's just simply say that it's going to be based upon pellet energy, which is the normal way dry fire has always determined whether you hit it or missed it. And in this case, let's leave the wind off completely. So we'll leave this at zero and zero. And if the wind is turned off, it doesn't make any difference what direction you have in the window. So now we have defined exercise number two. Now let's go up and add an exercise number three. I click on the add button. I'm going to come down and call this exercise three. I'm then going to leave this at 100% of speed. I'm going to say that there is no release delay whatsoever, zero, zero. I'm going to leave it as wedge of the pie, but I'm going to change the center line angle to six degrees to the right. And then I'm going to have a maximum trap angle here of eight degrees, either side of six degrees, meaning it could go 14 degrees to the right, but it also could go two degrees to the left. I'm then going to change the height at the intermediate point to eight feet, make the targets a little lower than you normally see them. Over in the wind speed area, I'm gonna go ahead this time and leave the wind speed alone, turned off. I'm going to leave us one more time on maximum. Uh, this time, I'm sorry, I'm gonna change this to uh, based upon pellet energy, and that's going to be my exercise number three. And my final exercise, number four, I'm gonna click the add button. I'm gonna come in and type in exercise four. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to leave the clay speed at 100. I'm going to put in a target release delay of from two seconds to five seconds. This would be a little unusual. So in other words, no target would fly any sooner than two seconds, but that no, no target would start any later than five seconds. Then I'm going to go ahead and leave it in wedge of the pie. This time I'm going to make it a normal field. So the center line is going to be straight ahead, zero, with a trap angle of 17.14 left and right, and an intermediate height of nine feet. This time, however, all I'm going to do is require that your accuracy is of a certain nature. So I'm gonna put in here 12.5 uh, inches. So what I'm saying now is that if you shoot and the center of your pattern is within 12 and a half inches of the center of the clay, it's going to record that you had a hit. And that completes the four exercises. And I hope now that you understand how to go ahead and create an exercise. And all I have to do at this point then is click OK. Takes me back to the previous panel and notice up here, here is my new plan called an assortment of exercises. And the final thing I promised to show you was how to export something that you have created that a friend of yours or someone you're coaching would need. So you simply need to come to your uh, training plans area and click on the one that you want to export, such as an assortment of exercises. Then you want to come over to the right hand side here and click on export. And then it wants to know where you want to export it to. And the easiest thing is to let it go to the desktop. And now you need to give it a name down here. So we're gonna call this an assortment of exercises. And you're gonna click on the save button. And when that happens, you get a choice up here of whether you want to enter this information or not. But what this does is if you will enter your email address in here, and then enter some textual information in here. It basically, when you send your email to the person you're passing your creation onto, it will have your email address embedded into it and the information that you want them to see, such as askbob at dryfireus.com, my email address. And down here, I might want to say, for instance, send me a copy of the PDF files that you created after shooting each exercise. So you do that and now when you click OK, you'll never see where this information really goes, but it will be in the email 
uh, folder that you send. And we have basically been through every possible thing except duplication. And if there is a need or an easy way, for instance, if you want to change this assortment of exercises in some minor manner, you might want to come up here and highlight it, click on duplicate, and then on that second copy, you can open up that second copy in the edit fashion and go ahead and then select exercise number one and make some changes to it. And that's an easy way that you don't have to start from scratch on everything. So now you know everything there is to know about trap exercises. I hope that you feel comfortable about using them. They're a very, very powerful tool and it should help your training. And that's it from Dry Fire Bob.